Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Eduardo Herrera and today we're going to talk about remote connectivity and wireless communications. Developing and securing our wireless connections. Today's learning objectives are dial-up and ISDN, DSL and cable modems, VPNs and IPsec, wireless technologies, wireless standards, Bluetooth technologies, and mobile wireless communications. Dial-up and ISDN connections, which is Integrated Services Digital Network, were the first remote connectivity technology developed since everyone pretty much had a phone line in their home. Dial-up and ISDN share a lot of similarities both use four unshielded twisted pair copper wires or basically telephone lines. They use PSTN for connection and both connect via a modem. They consist of analog and a digital signal at the CEO. Speeds on dial up are up to 56 kilobits per second, which was eventually replaced by broadband. ISDN was the first technology after dial up to integrate speech and data simultaneously, attaining speeds of up to 128 kilobits per second. After ISDN, DSL, digital subscriber line and cable modem connectivity were the next two technologies to be adopted. DSL does use only two of the four untwisted pair copper wires. It was easy to implement with the existing telephone line infrastructure and did attain speeds of up to 52 megabits per second. It is delivered in many flavors, but the three most important are SDSL, symmetric DSL, in which data both upstream and downstream travel at the same rate. Then there was ADSL, asymmetric DSL, in which data downstream travels faster than that of upstream. And then high bit DSL, HDSL, which provides T1 compatible speeds of 1.544 megabits per second over the same telephone line copper wires. Then we come to the cable modem, which is basically the same modem used to transfer TV information. This supports both coaxial and fiber cable with speeds up to 50 megabits per second and does have 24 by 7 connectivity. Next we have VPN or Virtual Private Network and IPsec, Internet Security Protocol. Virtual Private Networks or VPN secure a private tunnel through an untrusted connection. Encryption protocols ensure the confidentiality and integrity of the data through these tunnels. It uses point-to-point -point tunneling protocol PPTP uses a Layer 2 tunneling protocol, L2TP, which is developed by Cisco. Internet Security Protocol, or IPsec, works at the network layer providing top security on top of IP. It is able to secure multiple VPNs, secures IP communications through authentication and encryption protocols, and provides end-to-end -end security focusing on LAN-to-LAN -LAN connections. Wireless technologies occur all around us. As broadband shares frequency bands with microwave, satellite, radar, and ham radios. These communications take place over wireless pans, wireless LANs, wireless MANs and wireless WANs and via satellite. The components of wireless are access points or APs, service set IDs or SSIDs, and authentication to that access point. The security component of access points can be through the 802.11x through WEP, WPA, and WPA2.
The IEEE is a governance for developing the standards for the Internet and the products that support connectivity. They allocate the bandwidth that can be utilized by each of the 802.11x standards, which are licensed by the FCC. This chart is a small example of the IEEE standards and corresponding transfer rates as of today. Now we come to Bluetooth wireless technology. This is part of the 802.15 standard from the IEEE. It does provide short range wireless technology of approximately and maximum of up to 10 meters, connects portable or fixed devices with speeds of up to 1 to 3 megabits transfer rate. Mobile wireless communications. This has become the method which allows millions of users on a daily basis to have access to information and to communicate worldwide. On a global scale, the four main accesses are Frequency Division Multiple Access, which is FDMA, Time Division Multiple Access, TDMA, Code Division Multiple Access, CDMA, and orthogonal frequency division multiple access OFDMA. These all allow mobile devices through a wireless network to communicate and access it without any interruption and sometimes mitigating the distortion. In summary, in this presentation we have discussed remote connectivity that covered technologies that enable home and business users to gain access to networks so they can utilize resources to help them accomplish their tasks, whether at home, school, or at work. We discussed dial-up and ISDN, DSL and cable modems, VPNs and IPsec, wireless technologies, wireless standards, Bluetooth technologies, and mobile wireless communications. I want to thank you for joining me and you have a great day.